Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. And today we are going to be talking about Tifa. We're also going to talk about cloud a little bit, but we're really going to talk about why I think that with the global meta the way it is, with what's coming out over the next couple of months, how I really think that Tifa is going to shape things and really going to become a dominant force in the game. Let's go ahead and dig in. Tifa, of course, is rated as an S plus on Altima right now, and Cloud is rated as a double S. And it begs the question, why would I think that Tifa is going to be stronger than Cloud? And there is a couple reasons, uh, specifically with like GL Zazan right now and a couple of other things, but also more importantly, it actually comes down to the date and the viability of content that they will be used in. Now, of course, if we take just a quick peek at Cloud's build, he's gonna be great. He has a three hit multi-strike ability. He has access to the Buster Sword to increase his lightning attack. His uh, Klim Hazard is going to decrease critical evasion on the target. This is all really powerful uh, PVE stuff right uh he has the ability to increase attack and restore ap uh he has access to area of effect resistance defense defense penetration 60. this is all amazing however at the end of the day you still have the 10 percent weakness to magic and you still have the dominance of a ton of earth units right now in the game and you have a ton of earth units coming down the pipeline over the next couple of months and in terms of arena in terms of guild battle i have no doubt people will be setting earth units just to crush all the people that pulled for cloud now does that mean you shouldn't pull for cloud i personally think cloud is amazing i think his access to reflex is going to give him more survivability against black rose helena than say a lot of other damage dealers uh, but I still do think he has kind of that weakness and that earth element coming out over the next couple of months will completely dominate him. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, we have King Oberon coming out. We have Noctis coming out. Uh, we already have Summer Lilith EX, which JP didn't have when Cloud came out. We have Zazan the Unkillable, uh, which JP didn't have when Cloud came out. And then also we have to consider that Halloween is right around the corner. So we are probably going to be getting Halloween Ryu EX, which is a very powerful unit, uh, especially when he came out in his 99 form. I have no doubt uh, having access to re-raise and being a powerful earth unit, he will slot in perfectly with Zazan and Lilith or Oberon and Noctis. Uh, and then also we have Winter Venera EX, which may be used a little bit less, but is still just as powerful and still as much of a threat against Cloud. Now, in terms of the case for Tifa, we have a lot of wind units coming out. We have Gargus coming out, which should be, I believe, our next select quest unit. We have Velush coming out, who is going to be a magic-based samurai. And probably most importantly, we have little Leela EX coming out, who is probably going to completely shape the global meta. I would imagine, considering how powerful Black Rose Helena has been, having a unit potentially be on par with Black Rose Helena, uh, which I imagine little Leela EX would be, uh, could be very devastating and could change things drastically. Uh, it could also put us in a place where Cloud is maybe more viable because Little Leela EX is so powerful that she will crush out the other Earth formations that are coming. It's really interesting thinking about that, but also it would be universally kind of seen that Tifa would be going alongside of Leela. So you would have like Veluge, Tifa, Halloween Leela. Uh, you might run Gargus, although I don't think Gargus is that strong of an independent unit. I think he's very cool. Uh, but I do think that uh, you would probably fit Tifa into this team pretty quickly. And what does Tifa have that makes her potentially so powerful? What's going to stop her from getting one shot by like Black Rose Helena? 
for example, what's going to make her more survivable. And a lot of it has to do with her abilities and her mobility. Uh, she does have access to multiple attacks with high range and mobility where she is going to be put directly into the fray of the opponents. And the attacks are AOE that move her, so she's going to be right in there dealing direct damage. Not only that, she does have access to ignore fatal damage, which is also very important. She does have natural uh, slash resistance in her kit. And she also has her LB, um, her somersault combination, uh, which has a 45% chance to stun for two turns on the target. This limit break is very unique because there's not very many units in the game that can actually resist stun right now. Uh, it honestly wasn't even until recently that the stun um, like resistance was actually displayed on Wotive Calc, and I believe it was with the pudding earrings that they came out because the pudding earrings do have the stun resist on them and are one of the only pieces of gear with stun resist on them. So I do think that you'll be seeing her utilize her limit break, you'll be seeing her dash into the opponents, and you'll be seeing her kind of slowly take them apart. And especially with this limit break, I think this limit break could change things um, for us depending on you know how effective it is. There's also the thing to consider that we do have 2B in wind, and 2B is a constant threat still. Uh, she's still one of the most powerful wind units in the game, so pairing her with Tifa is just a natural synergy, and it's going to cause a mess. Now, a lot of the things I see about Tifa, and a lot of the conversations I'm hearing, involves saying you have to have Tifa's vision card. Usually when people are talking about Tifa, they say you have to have her vision card. And I actually disagree with that. Uh, I actually think you don't have to have her vision card. And I actually think there are many situations where her vision card is actually detrimental to herself uh, compared to potentially another vision card on the team, right? Because you're always gonna wanna have Tetrasilphid uh, which will give all of your wind units wind attack up that automatically is stronger than tifa's vc right um you're always going to want to have potentially exorcist for the critical hit rate up 25. you're always going to want to have 2b for the luck up you potentially might want downtime uh, for the slash resistance plus 20% if you are trying to be maybe more competitive with tifa and you're planning on going up against Dwayne's. um you know, there's a lot of situations where that single target resistance is good, but it's not really going to be saving you right now. And you're probably just going to get nuked down by an area of effect ability. And while that strike attack is really good for Tifa and potentially to be if you sub pugilist, it's going to kind of fall on deaf units. Basically, if you're running in a three man comp, because you're not going to have other wind units with fist. And in fact, the only UR wind unit with fist based attacks besides Tifa on the JP side right now is actually 2B. So you can't even fully buff a team of three with Tifa's vision card. Now, if we had more strike based units, or if this vision card was something that uh, affected non-wind element units, this could be really powerful, but I actually don't think it's required. And I did just want to talk about that since we were talking about Tifa, because I do think she's going to be really powerful, and I do think you're going to see synergies with Leela, Volush, Gargus, going up against all of these Earth compositions coming out. And I think people are kind of, they get set in stone, right? Like they look at a vision card that comes with Tifa, and they're like, oh my God, that's it. We have to do that. Now, there is one exception to this, and that would be if the single buff to Tifa that they potentially add on the global version of her VC is more powerful to offset the buffs that another character might receive from having another win card in the party. Uh, that would be equivalent to like 2B's VC, where it has a really powerful 2B buff as well. I don't know if we'll see that. The, the individual buff would have to be really high, I feel like, in order to warrant that. Um, granted, it does have a tack up on the individual unit, but we'll just have to wait and see on whether or not the vision card is going to be more powerful. Maybe we'll see today in the live stream. Uh, we are going to be streaming on the live stream, so if you do want to come and uh, hang out with me, Minute Havoc, Marquise, and Elder Wolf, uh, we will be on Twitch on Minute Havoc's channel 
uh, streaming this later tonight. Anyway, everybody, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you guys are all excited for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, I know I am, and uh, I hope you guys uh, kind of maybe acknowledge a little bit that Tifa is pretty strong and that, uh, you know, Cloud, while he's cool and he'll be really good PvE, might not be the best guild battle or arena unit out there. Anyway, everybody, thank you so much, and have a great rest of your day.